I came to Gujarat, as I told you, because I was interested in mission work. Bombay, at the time when I was there, had very largely educational institutions, good work undoubtedly, but I was interested more in seeing that I could work for the poor and doing the work of spreading the gospel message. And that is really what I came to Gujarat for, because I was impressed by what the fathers were doing in the Kerala district. And it's precisely this desire that made me push the work of Gujarat in South Gujarat and also in the North Gujarat area. I feel very happy that this work has been a great success. One of the first things that I found when I became provincial was that we had no technical school in the province, something which was being talked about from the time I joined in 1938. So I decided a technical school was needed and I began to try and purchase the land needed for it. But what I really remember about my years as provincial is working and starting the missions in the South Gujarat area and in the Kolol area. The South Gujarat missions, I think, have been flourishing. They have been a great success, thanks to the fathers working there. And the work in the North Gujarat missions started in 1964-65, started especially by Father Garit, I think have also been a success. When I went to Shambhaganur, I realized that the Society of Jesus was an international society, a universal society. There were members of society there from different parts of the world and from different parts of India. I came to Gujarat after I had completed my studies of philosophy in Shambhaganur. That was in 1945. But when I came to Gujarat, I was asked to continue my studies. I had completed two years before I joined the society in St. Xavier's College, Bombay, and I went back to St. Xavier's College to complete my studies in mathematics and graduated in 1947 in the Bombay University. When that was over, I was sent to do my theology studies, and it was in Pune, but only for one year there, because after that one year in Pune, we were sent to, to Kersiang, St. Mary's, to complete our theology studies. It was there I was ordained in 1951. And as I look back now on those years, I realize that in November this year, I will com be completing 60 years as a priest. In my final year in theology, I was asked by the professors to come and join the theology faculty. I told them I had already been instructed to leave for America to complete my studies there, studies which I would complete in order to return to the province and start in Gujarat something similar to XLRI of Jamshedpur. But while I was doing my tertianship in America, I got a letter from the provincial Father Aureliano telling me the province has decided to start a college in Gujarat, get your studies completed in economics and return. So on completion of tertiary, I went to New York and there I tried to get admission first in Harvard University. I was granted admission, but I couldn't find a place to stay in a Jesuit house there. So then I applied to Columbia, where once again I was given admission, but stayed at Spelman Hall in Fordham University and did my studies in Columbia. When my studies in Columbia were completed, I returned to the province. That must have been in April 1956. St. Xavier's College had already been started, first in the school at Mirzapu. And when I came down, when I came back to Ahmedabad, it was beginning to prepare for its work in Navarangpura, Ahmedabad. The first years when I was in the college were very busy years for me. I was vice principal of the college. I was teaching a new subject. I was in charge of the college hostel. I was building up the new laboratories. 
Not being a science student, taking care of the laboratories was for me a difficult job, but I think we managed to do it fairly well. My first experiences and my first recollections of St. Xavier's College was of a college that did not get good students. Many of the principals of nearby colleges would telephone to me or write to me, say, Father, I'm sending you this boy or this girl. He's not fit for my college. I hope you will accept him. So in the early years of our college, we accepted a lot of students who were not really very brilliant. The results obviously were neither good nor very bad. But after a few years, I realized that if the college was to do a good job for the church, we had to improve. It was then we decided to take students with higher percentages free. We worked on them, encouraged them to study hard, and the results certainly improved. This helped us really to get much better students, and from that time, I think the name of the college was made. I had completed only six years in the college when the then provincial Father Gomes called me up to his room and as I sat down all he said to me was get your bag ready and move to Rosary School Baroda you have been transferred there. I was at, at Rosary School Baroda for only three or four months before I left to come back to St. Xavier's College as provincial, this time occupying the provincial's room, which was on top of the principal's office of the college. I realized at that time that there was a need for a separate house for the provincial. The college had land across the road, and I chose that land to build what is now called Newman Hall. All of you know then when it was first built, it was called Campion Hall, similar to what was in Oxford, where they had a Campion Hall for the students, the Je for the Jesuit scholastics who studied at the Oxford University. It wasn't long before I decided to change the name Campion Hall to Newman Hall, because that was the time when St. Xavier's College had become champion in sports, and most people began calling this Champion Hall, thinking that we were publicizing the fact that we had become champion in sports. Newman obviously was a great, was a great university man, and I was happy to name it Newman Hall. I am also happy that when Father Quayley came to Newman Hall, he named it after what Newman Hall had written, Premal Jyoti. I was at Newman Hall for only three or four years before I got a letter from Rome telling me that I had to come there as the, as the assistant. I had not yet completed six years of my provincialate, so I wrote to Rome telling them to let me first complete my six years. But the reply came, come immediately to Rome. Anyway, I went to Rome and was the first to be assistant after the many years Father Jerem de Souza had been the assistant for India. In a way, I was sorry to leave because at that time, Gujarat, the Gujarat province had a very, very good name. In fact, when I reached Rome, one of the first things Father Jerem de Souza told me, thank God for the province of Gujarat, something he repeated three times. Anyway, I settled down in the Courier of Rome, looking at papers every day, not doing much else, helping Father Arupe to come to, to decisions with regard to the work of the Jesuits in India. But I was not happy being in Rome so long because I told Father Arupe that if I had to know what was really going on in India, I should really visit India more often, to which he agreed. So every three months I visited India, stayed in India for about a month and then returned to Rome. It was one, one of my visits to India when I was in the Jamshedpur province. Before I was leaving, one of the American Jesuits told me, Frank, I want to tell you something. 
I said, what do you want to tell me? You will be back with us soon. I was surprised. I said, what makes you say that? He looked at me and said, you don't know who is going to be the next Bishop of Jamshedpur? I returned to Rome and went back to see Father Arupe. I said, Father Arupe, I hear something about my going to Jamshedpur. From his cupboard, he took out a beautiful, solid gold pectoral cross. He put it on me and said, you look very nice. I told him, Pedro, do you want me to look nice or do you want me to be a good bishop? Knowing that I was not interested in being bishop, he cancelled. I, he didn't, I don't exactly know what happened, but I was not the bishop of Jamshedpur. I was only about three or three and a half years in Rome when I got a letter saying that I was to return to the province and to return as principal of St. Xavier's College, something which I did in April 1970. And from 1970 to 1980, I was the principal of St. Xavier's College. When I retired in 1980, having reached the age of 60, I went to different parts of the province, first to Newman Hall, later on to the technical school in Baroda. Once I retired as principal of the college and went to different parts to, to say Vasi and different places, I was in Loyola when I received a letter from the Apostolic Internuncio telling me that I should accept to be Bishop of Baroda. I had refused to be Bishop in Jamshedpur and my first desire was to refuse to be Bishop of Baroda. However, I realized at that time that the Bishop of Baroda, Bishop Ignatius de Souza, was having a difficult time. He had come from Bombay. He was not exactly a missionary. So I thought it would be good for me to accept this offer and accept to be Bishop of Baroda. And that's where I was for 10 years before I returned to St. Xavier's College at the invitation of the then provincial Bishop Godfrey de Rosario, who took my place as Bishop in Baroda. The only advice I have said is, let's be truly men of prayer. Let's be people who have committed ourselves to poverty. Let's be people who have committed ourselves to work for justice. If we are truly men of prayer, truly men committed to poverty, truly men committed to justice, then I think we will truly work for the Church of Gujarat.